Every child that comes here does things in a different way. So if you study their way and you cheat and steal from them, it helps you become better because I'm learning every day. Nick is someone who's given his life to the game, you know, and, and uh, he, he's given a lot to a lot of people, myself included. I don't know where I'd be now, but I, I don't think I would have been nearly as successful as I've been. You know, Nick gave me an opportunity to come down there and, and uh, train with, with the best juniors in the world, and, and uh, it really, you know, all that practice, just beating up against each other, we all pushed each other higher and higher. And I couldn't have gotten that in Dade City. He's an extremely good motivator. I've seen him work with Andre in the past and, and Celis, and he's, he's got a lot of energy. And, and, and you can't say that about a lot of coaches. He's always, always been very nice to me, and, and he's always upbeat. He's done a lot for himself. I mean, he was basically the, the first one who started the whole academy uh, business, you know, from, from Nick. He came to the Saddlebrook and the Harry Hopman, but Nick was the first one that basically started, and he's, he's been you know, very successful. You know, as a, a person on the street here in the United States or in Europe, you know, who's a good coach? Uh, you know, the first person is Nick Balateri. Bounce back quicker. The coach's choice. First with Arias when he came out, the biggest forehand in tennis at the time, and, and people didn't say anything like it. And then Crickstein and, you know, and Carlene Bassett hit so hard. And, you know, myself, I think he's added a, a, a lot to the to just a level of tennis as a power sense goes, you know, just dominant tennis playing, aggressive playing. And, and that's what it keeps tennis striving, you know. I, I don't think you're ever going to see another number one player in the world who's under six feet tall, you know. It's like everybody's now going to be big and strong because you need to be big and strong. And, and he taught you how to do that even if you weren't big and strong. Hello. How important is a warm-up? You know, quite often students come to the tennis courts, all calibers of play, they're so anxious to get on the tennis court, they go right to the baseline and they start banging the balls. I don't recommend this, why? First of all, you can have an injury. Second of all, you're not really prepared, you're not warmed up, you're not mentally into it. And third, by warming up, you learn how to use racket head speed. I personally feel the warm-up is one of the most neglected parts of the game. From the power pit. This is my life and this is where I belong, but uh, I don't know whether most people uh, realize it or not that I spend it approximately eight hours a day on the tennis court besides being in the office and this is the part I'd never give up. Athletes 
and champions are born. I, I don't think that you create a champion. Come on, big boy. I think there's certain things that are there. Low to high. And then if the yeah. person's willing to pay the price you know, boy's like the to have them taken like out from him, you start um, here, you take your they can really become somebody. Like then you bring your racket back up to here, then you decide to hit the ball, okay? Now, if you can show me the benefit of going down, up and back down, I'm going to put it into my teaching. Keep your head still. No, 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 you can't. So you, you move your head all over the place. You can't do that. Look at my head. This is what you do when you volley. Look, forehand. Over here, and then the backhand, you tilt your head over there. You can't be moving your body when you volley. Come on up here. Now, let's get a good ready position. Hold it, hold it. Get the racket out here in front. Let's get down ready that you really want to ball. Come on. It all begins right here. The single most important group in the world, the Tiny Cats. They're having lots of fun playing with the toys and with their little dogs. And who's right next to them? Their mom or their dad or perhaps both of them. Their brothers, their sisters. They look over and if the mom and dad is having fun, who knows? They'll say, Mommy, can I hit the ball a little bit? And here's where it begins. That's the way to swing right at me. Swing it right at me. Let me see it again. That a boy. Good shot. Let me see it again. That a boy. Do you want to be a tennis player when you when you grow up? Yes. And would you like to play on the WCT tour, maybe with Jimmy Connors and Ely Nastasi and Harold Solomon and Rod Laver and all those guys? Yes. Now we're looking at 10 to 12 year olds, two boys and two girls. Having fun, yes, but they're beginning to develop their style, what they'll do naturally. Notice they're starting to move, developing some racket speed, keeping the ball in play. What's their next step? Playing out some points and even what? A few tournaments. The group you're now looking at is the intermediate, the good solid intermediate three or four years of play, and they're working on one of the most important strokes of the game, the serve. The serve and return to serve are essential to making the big time or becoming the best that you can become. What we're now doing is working on consistency and placement of the serve. Just getting it in the box is not enough. And they'll work on this each and every day. You can't spend enough time on the serve. Y'all ready for this? The Top Gun, whether it be our group or your group, these are the kids that are almost there. Not only are playing points every day in games and tournaments, they're preparing for the professional life or the very elite college. In fact, one of these young ladies just beat Capriotti, the number five ranked player in the world. It's all business. Yeah, there could be some humor in it, but this is business. It's not only hitting the ball, it's when to hit it, how to hit it, and who hits it last.
let's get it going. You know how it's going, right? Move in there a little bit. Come on. That's too far back. Let's go. How can students hit a ball out by 20 feet? I mean, there's no reason for this. Now, come on, Stacy. It's a matter of getting your brain going. He hits his overhead like a girl. Make him hit the overhead. Coach can take only so much credit. You know, when they say that the coach develops a champion, you, you only develop the talent that's there. I think the champion's there to begin with. I came here three or four years ago. I had the worst temper of anybody, just about. I'd get mad every time I missed a ball. I'd crack rackets. I'd do everything. And uh, I came here, and every time I would yell or throw a racket, Nick would give me a 5,000-word essay to write on why I shouldn't throw my racket. And uh, pretty soon I was writing a novel. It's disappointing a lot of times when you get calls that go against you, but, you know, if you take somebody's whole career, you know, and you line up the calls they got against them and the call they got for them, you know, I mean, they're not going to be much difference. They'll more or less be equal. I never considered those as tough times. I considered those as great learning times and, and how fortunate I was to be able to come up, you know, through the ranks rather than just go out, be handed a big club or, or, or a big academy. I think it was fantastic to share with other coaches and to learn the business, you know, through the ranks. Colling uh, had a great backhand, her forehand was fair, her serve was fair. She'd sneak in in volley, but she was a great competitor, and she knew how to win. And that's why she did so well, and she was a beautiful young girl with blonde hair, and she had the big smile, and her dad was fantastic, and a lovely mother, and uh, that's what made Carling unique. They made the most of Carling Bassett. When I'm on the court, I don't want to lose. I mean, inside, I just hate it when I lose points, and when I'm down, I figure why well, give up when you can, you still have a chance to win, so try to fight it out. Carly's turned pro, you know, she thinks she's got the world now. Doesn't practice anymore or anything. <laughs> we have a movie star and a tennis player here now. Nick's theory was to get me a weapon. And my forehand was my biggest shot, so he went for working hardest on my forehand, basically, and making that my biggest shot. And it worked out well. I think everybody does need a weapon. And he was very good at, at spotting what shot for me was going to be my weapon and just really hounding me to, to work on that shot. Right, come on, look good. My father was the one who taught me when I was a kid 
And my dad never told me in my whole life, you did this well, good shot, anything. If I hit a good shot, nothing was said. If I missed a shot, all hell broke loose. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm working with Nick, and he's telling me things, but then each time encouraging me. Yes, great, beautiful, that a boy. Well, Terry, Tennis Academy, can I help you? Yeah, can we speak with Nick, please? It's uh, Fat Headed Mark from uh, The Power Pick. Oh, he'll know exactly who we are. Just a moment. He'll put us right through, pal. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're stars. <laughs> this is Danielle. Hey, Danielle. Hi. How are you this morning? Fine. Who is this, please? This is Fat Headed Mark from The Power Pick. Uh, no, no. Uh, Boris Becker and Andre Agassi. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's who's on the line. Could we talk to uh, Nick, please? Uh, hold on for just a moment, please. Thank you. Good morning. Hello, Nick? Yes, sir. Hey, Nick Boltieri? Yes, sir. Hey, well, this is uh, <clears throat> Fathead and Mark from 93.3 FM in uh, Tampa. Don't hang up on us, Nick. No, yeah, Nick. Yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, you know, I got this little fax. I know you guys send out some things with the uh, Tennis Academy and everything. Mm -hmm. and, and I was looking through it, and, and it was talking about some of the superstars that had come through your academy. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the cash, to be quite honest with you. They make a lot of money. And uh, we were wondering if uh, we could talk to you and possibly work out a deal where, where Mark and I uh, kind of attended the academy. Well, if you can afford it, uh, our prices we, we certainly will take in as an applicant. If you can't afford it, uh, we afford? do have some scholarships available. Now, Ford, I think we've got a bad connection. I didn't there, hear Nick. that. You're driving a Ford, Nick? Is that what you said? No, I said if you can afford the uh, price, we certainly will take you. Well, there's big money. There's big money in tennis, Nick. It's yeah, just not is. real big money in radio. What would it take to turn, uh, say, a guy named Moron or Fathead <laughs> and his buddy Mark into maybe a doubles tennis championship partnership team that wins? Does he have a little Italian background in him? Well, uh, no, but I keep mean, it in mind. I mean, you have to have a certain charisma to, to get to a height like that. I mean, you have to start out with, uh, you know, some formula that you have at least a chance. So if we can start out with that, I think we, we can, can do the rest of the work for you. I got a funny feeling that uh, Andre Agassi... Yes, and, sir. And uh, Jim Courier probably would have just turned out to be no good low life disc jockeys like that's us right. if they had to run into you. Yeah, but they like your music. That's the main thing. Fathead and Mark on the radio. Fathead and Mark in the morning. Power 93. It's the right kind of love. It's the right kind of night. You're the right kind of girl. The way we move is like this, watch. Step, skip, step, slide. Then we make the swing. Don't start your swing too soon because we want to have balance before we hit. Okay, watch. One, two, three, four, on the back toe. When I first began teaching the game of tennis, uh, which goes way back to the late 50s, you know, we taught very classical. We had very little body movement. We'd hit the forehand. It's actually how pretty you look with the right foot behind. Pull the left foot back for recovery. The same for the backhand. Now you look at chains, you look at Couriers and Agassiz hitting the ball and, you know, Lender with the elbow up and Edberg with the elbow up. You say to yourself, what the heck is going on? What is right and what is wrong? Well, to tell the truth, I don't know what is right or wrong. But I know that there are some things and some factors that never change. The good, solid, ready position to be able to spring off and get the ball. The shoulder and hip rotation. But the forehands today are very different. You have the circular motions, you have the semi-western grips, you have the follow-throughs going out and around your neck. You see the recovery coming in with the right foot coming forward and the left foot actually coming up off the ground. And the recovery starting before the stroke is actually finished. But the big things about the forehands today, they go after the ball, they challenge it. They don't hit the ball on the way down, they try to hit the ball on the way up. Good. Two more. Good. My forehand used to be the weakest part of my game, I, up to 13 years old. And with the help of Nick, you know, I just changed my grip a little bit. And, and, and for two years, going out there, hitting the ball as hard as I can without worrying where it goes. Because, you know, someday it'll go in. That's just, it's just a philosophy you always live by. And, and they're going in. <laughs>
There's a lot of intensity in this practice. And sort of working on one and two minute drills. You're better off working on one and two minute drills in high intensity than, you know, 30 to 40 minutes and just wasting half your time. Look at that right foot come forward again. I want you to watch the left hand on his forehand. Go back there again. I want you to watch what the left hand does for Agassi. I think this is very important for a lot of students to utilize the left hand. All right, here we go. Look, that left hand not only pushes the racket up, but it keeps that left shoulder up and enables him to get underneath the ball and hit below it and then go to a high follow through. There's that left hand again, holding that racket, pushes it back. There's the balance, the left hand up, and there's the left hand again. Preparation, step, hit, and look how he explodes into it with the right side. Very much like using the right side into golf. If you don't, you only hit the ball with your arms or the flick of the wrist, and that's when you have your problems, and also your balance is affected. Well, a weapon would be the same as having an F-15 or an F-16, uh, something that uh, would be able to react under any circumstances and come out uh, the winner in the majority of times. So a student, uh, especially in modern day tennis, uh, just being able to do everything quite well would have a difficult time making the big time. You have to do everything well, but do one or two things two. exceptionally Beautiful. well. Good preparation. Three, that is fantastic. Look at the racket head speed. Four, you can hit a ball better. Five, that is the ultimate. That's six, you cannot do better than that. Seven, come on, buddy, come on, man, put out. I have the ability that, uh, that God has given to me, the ability to drive a person to a maximum point and, and still enjoy it because of my positive reinforcement at all times. I don't badger people beautiful, out in beautiful. the court. I don't put them down and make them feel like they're nobody. I'll drive them, but uh, I, I can use choice words to still make them feel Excellent that feet. I care about them. And Excellent that's what kids feet. are looking for. Right around it. Very, very good. One more, last one. Move those feet. All right, well done, well done. What do you think? That's tough drill. That's tough drill. If you can do this particular drill right here, when they go out to actually play the game and have a ball over there, it's, it's a piece of cake. The business side and the tennis side go hand in hand. If you're successful in business, then you can award more money towards scholarship and top players and minority players and those lacking funds to come to the academy. So we cannot separate these two divisions. You see uh, the charisma, the, the feeling minutes, holy mackerel, minutes, the excitement's we'll on. Up. I mean, the adults are going, the kids are going. Quarter, Agassi, Medvedev, I mean, Sampras. I mean, it's, 
you know, it, it's a combination of many things. Make the and when you have all this action going on, including the indoor center, and now the new rehabilitation and the new gym and the new recreation center and the lake and kids running and playing in the big pool, you know, all of that fits into a, it's almost like a, a bomb that's exploding every second. Five, four, three, two, one, go! <laughs> guy with the uh, headband around his head right there? Yeah, you need to move him over the court. He's too good for that court. Let's move him over the court. Instructors, get the lobs deeper now. Let's make them work on the overhead. Deeper lobs, same thing. Let's go. Denny, close into the net. Close the net. Put out a little effort to get in there and finish the play. Come on. You got into the net and you let a ball go. Get in there and finish the point. That's better, Sydney. That's better. That's all right. That's better. That's all right. That's a good job right there. That's the way to work. First of all, you have to be somewhat of a dreamer. And then if you dream certain things, that means that something's in you saying, go for it. But so few people are willing to risk and put it on the table. You know, um, if you fail a few times and get through those tough times, you can reach great heights. Uh, I did have uh, my problems in, in marriage because of spending so much time in my business. I also had some financial difficulties in trying to help a lot of people. But failures um, did not slow me down or, or get me discouraged. But you can also be fairly rough and tough on people, not to say rude. Well, you know, you have to be an Al Pacino once in a while. I mean, whether or not I mean it underneath, um, that, that, that could be questionable. But there are times that you have to wear, you know, the mask of three or four faces and turn on the charm or turn on the, uh, the pushing stick. We used to call it a swagger stick in the, in the paratroopers, but uh, I think that's very important. And, and for me, um, it's tough to push all day long, 16, 18 hours, but I'm blessed with my children and, and also a lovely young lady that I'm dating, Leah, and she makes it easy for me at the end of the evening to come home because we do a lot of laughing together and sharing together. And this gives me the, uh, the juice to go on the next day. One, two, three, four. Boom, on the back toe. Excellent. Back to zero. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Boom, on the back toe. One, two, hit, recover. One, two, three, four. Not bad. One, two, three, four. Yes. The backhand. One hand, two hands, two hand with one hand release. An awful lot of variation. However, there's some basics, no matter what backhand you hit. What are they? Early preparation, hip and shoulder turn. 
Backhand is much more natural than the forehand. You're hitting away from your body. However, a lot of people feel they lack strength. But by that natural motion and a positive swing, you can get over that feeling. Two of my students sitting right now are demonstrating the two-handed and the one-handed backhand. Two-handed backhand, very much like Chris Everett's. Straight back, good, good foundation, and good racket That's preparation with a fantastic follow-through towards feet. the target. This young boy hits the backhand, the one-handed backhand, as well as any of my students. Semi-Western backhand grip, early Perfect. preparation Tuck with unbelievable pull. racket Excellent. speed on contact. So no matter whether it be a one-hand or a two-hand, You've got to hit it, you've got to go after it, and feel as though you own the ball. Let's stop a second. You know, the one thing that we have to watch for Maxie is that when you hit, you have a tendency to pull the shoulder off a little bit. Let's let the racket head go out and let your hips open up and then take that left step. Don't pull off the ball so quickly. Very good. Good. Well, I first went there in uh, January of 85. Uh, Nick. Uh, invited me down to come and, and I said I'd love to go so I, I came down and uh, moved into my first room with uh, with Andre Agassi and, and uh, <laughs> six six other guys that was a real treat I was kind of in awe the first day when I got there looking at all these great juniors you know and, and pros like Aaron Crickstein Jimmy Arias walking around and I was a little bit scared and a little bit excited and, and uh, a little bit happy to be there all at the same time Nick was very much like uh, uh, an autocrat uh, there. It was it was his place, and every all the kids, including me, were afraid of him. You know, he would he would walk around, and he was the dictator. We all had had a ton of respect for him and, and a ton of fear of him too. It was it was uh, you know before I got to know him, it was it was like that. Once once you got to know him, you know he softens up a lot. You come here if you're serious about one or two things, tennis or enjoying yourself. You know, some people come here, they're serious about your tennis, and they get a lot out of it. Some people come here, they just want to have fun, they're in Florida, they're with friends, it's, it's for that. But this, the, the Nick Volatieri Tennis Academy is great in the sense that you get out of it what you put into it. If you pour a lot of hard work into it, it, it pays you dividends that you'll see the rest of your life. Raul is pretty tough. You certainly won't blend the clubs. <laughs> no, gosh! That was too good. Is that beautiful? Huh? Looking good, baby! <laughs> you can go play, play uh, golf. Oh, Andre it. loves golf. <laughs> oh, heck. He loves, golf. he loves golf now. He can hit it. having fun at what he's doing and you can have fun training he'll give you 110 percent the difficult time is when he's not having fun dad dad i dedicate this trophy to you The check is mine, though, so don't push that. Is he more of a father to you or a friend? Uh, more of a friend. He really lets me live my life and, 
and doesn't try making my decisions, you know, only, only, only is there for me if, if I make a bad one. If Andre stopped today or had an injury, I would not think of taking another boy his age. I'd rather wait for my next crop because the, the feeling and the excitement that's been between Andre and myself and the Agassiz family couldn't be duplicated and I wouldn't want to spoil the years that we've uh, shared together. And you can always come back. I always keep open arms. Even Arias and Christine who left them, you know, he still keeps the doors open for them to come back whenever they want. He's a good guy. I basically did, uh, did not um, uh, grow up at Nick's. I was basically in, in Los Angeles. I was not um, part of the Curry or Agassiz Wheaton school. I basically um, went to Nick's uh, when I turned pro. You know, it's ironic because the, the, the moment I start working out at the academy, my tennis really start improving. And, um, you know, there it's just, uh, you, got, you got the weights, you got the life cycles, you got everything you need right, you know, right in your backyard. And I had, I had a condo five minutes away, so it was very convenient. There was always a pro for me to hit with. So. Um, you know, as far as the, my tennis, it was great for my tennis. I think the big thing that we have here is uh, is actually the very good footwork and balance. If you just see also when he just hit that backhand a few seconds ago, again, there's a beautiful backhand. Look how he uses that front leg. And that's actually where you get the balance from. And if you have balance, you can do all sorts of things with your stroke. Normally a student, no matter what level they're on, feels their stroke goes off. And that really doesn't go off nine out of 10 times. It's your balance and position that goes off, which then in turn affects the stroke. Medvedev, a very, very hard worker, and his center of gravity is fantastic. I've seen him in a work weight room working on exactly that. Look how he uses his legs. Look at the development of his thighs. And he's a, he's a very fierce competitor. He gives away nothing. It was just like in the bread line in Russia. You know, they give away nothing there. This just shows what top players do when they get out there. I mean, they're, they're doing their bit of business as if they're actually playing for money. And this is really important for the everyday player to get out and be a little bit more serious in their, with their practice habits. Beyond Borg trained here for three months, and he gave a fantastic speech to our youngsters. He said a very simple thing. The very second he stepped onto the tennis court, onto that 7,200 square feet. Everything he did was match point. Whether it was two hours or three hours, he won for every ball. If a bird flew over the court, he'd go for the bird. You know what that'll do for you also? You'll begin to anticipate where the ball's going. Most players hit a ball, look and they say, my gosh, I'm terrific. I wouldn't do that. Boom, hit, and as you're recovering, and watching where the ball is going, then tell yourself how terrific you are. The old player meets, you know, the new players. It was the same when I met the older generation when I was young. difficult for him because it's a whole new game and he you know in 10 years that he was out of the game all of a sudden it completely changed he's still as fast I think as he was or close to it because he's still one of the fastest players I've ever played against um, 
And that was fun to watch because he glides around the court. Turn, stepping in, meet the ball. Excellent, do it again. Turn, meet the ball. Excellent, do it again. Excellent, do it again. We're picking up the pace a little bit. Turn, block, turn, block, turn, block, turn, block. Very nice, rotate. There we go. There we go. The other way. Very nice. Keep the eyes on the lights. Keep the eyes on the lights. The volley, making contact with the ball before it bounces. Are you afraid of the volley? Most people are. Do not fear the volley. It's the same as a ground stroke. Utilize on, your opponent's power. Get out there and work. You see two students out here making contact with the ball with a very slight backswing. The big factor determining a successful volley is not swinging at it unless it's an easy ball. The more difficult the ball is, the shorter the backswing. Remember, if you just hold your racket right there and make contact with the ball, that's the volley. Difficult ball uses power. And always challenge the ball. Challenge. Challenge. Perfect. Go after it. Go after it. Good boy. Challenge. Perfect. Now. All right. Perfect. Yes. Yes. All right. That's it. That's it. been meticulous about myself how I look physically working out staying in good shape it's something that it just comes naturally I don't work at that age I mean I get up in the morning when I get through um, shaving I put the things away uh, if I say it's somebody's home in my home I make the bed if I get through uh, eating something I go put the plate in the, in the sink and wash it I mean that's just me I mean uh, that's uh, something that I've done all my life Hi guys. Hi, oh, what's up? This is a mess. I know. Okay, you had to clean up these things, okay? Yeah. Two zeros. Come on out, inspection time. 
Okay, the shoes. You see all the shoes here? Whose shoes are these, please? Okay, let's take the shoes and put them underneath the bed. No, no, don't kick it underneath <laughs> there. That's not, you don't kick it under there. Put them in there straight. Hey, the guys that live in this back bedroom, come in here, please. When did you guys put this poster up? We need to take that poster down. That's a little, uh, both those posters need to come down, okay? Would you show your mom in here, okay, with posters like that on the wall? Well, you know how I got to show parents in here all the time. Hey, you should be standing outside, guys. Not too many people inside, okay? This is called the three ball drill. A big forehand that's hit four or five feet inside the baseline. As soon as they hit that forcing forehand, a short ball will come. They'll come in with the backhand. After the backhand, they'll attack the net, forcing the opponent to hit their best possible shot. If they don't, Craig will end that with a volley. Okay, let's try that again. Good attitude, Craig. Big backhand, boy. Excellent. Can't do that any better. Christina, accelerate. One, beautiful. After it. Two, that's my girl. Excellent volley. The work is not just done out here on the court. These children are spending hours inside a physical fitness center with our trainer, Jose. You just can't come out here and learn to move your feet this way. A lot comes naturally, but you've got to develop strength in key areas of your body to be able to do this over and over and over. Being an elite group, uh, the 187th Airborne, which later became the 82nd Airborne, uh, it, it was one in which um, you, you felt that you were the best, even if you weren't. Uh, you believed in it. This is what we were preached to. You always dressed smartly, and uh, you always were uh, ready to tackle new adventures, and actually, you know, a little crazy to jump out of planes anyway. That's just like the air show, like a F-15 making a 360-degree turn. That's amazing how those kites look so much like it. In fact, the planes look much like the kites. Come on! I trust that you can. Let's go! Let's go! Keep on going and back this way. Come on! Let's get going. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Back pedal, back pedal, come on, let's go! Get there, keep on going, keep on going, let's go, let's go! Spin it, forward! Medium pace, you guys, not too fast. We're gonna be here for a long time. One down, two up, follow through on the left side. That's not bad. You see what happens there? The momentum actually brings the back foot in. That's fine too. One, two, follow through. Come in and finish. Yes, ready. The serve, one of the most important parts of the game. What makes up the serve? the toss and the downswing. If you can't put the toss in the same place all the time, you will have a problem. Once you master the toss, then work on the downswing, whether it be a full downswing or an abbreviated downswing. There's no reason any of you shouldn't have a good serve. Remember, it's the ball and racket working together. In the beginning, work on techniques and rhythm. Power will come from confidence. 
Good luck with you, sir. How many of your first serves go into the net? A lot, right? You know what I'm going to have you do the next time you go out to practice? Stand about five or six feet behind the baseline. What's this going to make you do? It's going to make you hit up and out. You better clear that net. Now you better do it again, Frenchie, or you're going to be picking up balls the whole day. That's perfect. Next, Christina. Now we'll take Christina with a little bit more of the classic look. She has a longer back swing. Keeps the left hand up, extended real well, and she tosses the ball up a good two feet higher than he does. Beautiful. Notice his feet and how they land into the court. Very, very different. He lets the left foot end up in front. Christina lets the right foot end up. I mean, everybody is different. Very nice. Because he's my favorite player. Agassi. Why are you waiting for Agassi? Other people. He's number one. Yes. Number one. <laughs> we love him. Hi. Yes. He, we, we had you lunch. Out, we, we watched him eat lunch for two and hours. He had salad and pasta. And now we've been waiting for three hours and he still is not coming out to talk to us. He waved to us. Do you want to get an autograph? Yes. yes. On our hat. On our hat. Wait, is that his shirt? I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Different times you like to play, like uh, for example, when I played Aaron in the first match, you know, I knew it was going to be cold that whole day, and especially at night, so I was preferring not to play at night. You know, I wish I could have played in the day, but then uh, with the weather forecast today, is you're kind of glad you're playing early because if you do get a chance, you want to get your match over with and give yourself the time to work on more things or to or to just relax. And uh, but you got to show up to a tournament ready to play, and it's it's. One thing that I've realized is when you're ready to play, there's a lot of things that doesn't even that don't even really matter. You know, who you're playing, when you play, or or if there's a rain delay. The more well known I became, the less I could communicate with my students. If you communicate and, and you're sort of uh, be shown on television, it'll cost you a, a penalty and perhaps cost Andre fifteen hundred dollars. And I think at this time of, of my coaching career and, and Andre's uh, playing career, uh, the less uh, a coach does to help a student like that is, is for the better. You know, I, I might yell at him, come on, get your feet going or like that, but the hand signals and, 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 and you know, touching your ears and removing your glasses, uh, uh, we're far beyond that. I take my job as a tennis player very seriously. I enjoy it very much, but I also uh, take it very seriously. And, and I'm just going to continue to to work hard and try and get better and better. And uh, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I'm going to stay healthy. Uh, that's the most important thing. And uh, you know, I'm just 
go out and enjoy myself and hit a few balls, travel the world, and, and be with my buddies on the tour. You know, in playing against Burnt Force, what, what Jim is doing, uh, you know, he's doing what he has to do. He, he's drifted back a little bit more behind the baseline because Burnt Force can't hit with Jim. He's hitting those high balls, and Jim is just picking his shots. There it is right there. You know, Jim has all the shots. I think that's what makes Jim so interesting, is that he has all the shots, and he's always going to come after you. It's tough. There he is. Look where he's hitting. Stop that. Let's go back there a second. Let's go back. There's a big forehand, a backhand, and now stop right there. He has run around that backhand so much that he's about a foot away from the alley. And this is Jim's whole way of playing. He wants to hit that forehand as many times as he can. But he's very intelligent in how he sets up that shot. Poor performance in here and a poor performance in the chair, but you know, we, we all do our best out there. He just didn't quite get it. You know, we all do things that, that uh, in the heat of the moment, I don't regret anything. What's that? I'm sorry, you See if we can stop this and back this up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we got that cleared up. I checked, uh, came in on everything possible. And no matter how good a counterpuncher is, when a person gets on top of the net and practically shake hands with it, your passing shots have to be phenomenal. Coaches have to be very realistic. And uh, there could only be a few reasons why a match is won or lost. I mean, it, especially in a close match, and today was a close match. You know, Krychek is a big server, and at certain times, uh, the serve uh, was it unreturnable or was an outright ace, which means it puts a lot of pressure on your serve. And you have to take advantage of every opportunity, or at least nine out of ten opportunities, to break a big server. I mean, that's what happened at, at Wimbledon. You know, it was 37 aces against him by Isavinovich, but at a certain time, uh, he broke him and uh, the match was on race. But it's always difficult against a big server. Later on uh, in the locker room, Andre uh, said to me, you know, if we don't do anything else, uh, we've done it all. I mean, winning Wimbledon is, is the highest award that a player can get and certainly the highest award a coach could receive and seeing one of his students uh, win the big uh, granddaddy of them all. That's the biggest atomic bomb I've ever seen in my life. It's going off every second. It's like dynamite, uh, piles of dynamite put together, uh, attractiveness, uh, very abrasive, rude, uh, arrogant, confident, and then she can turn on a charm like an actress. And uh, 
she could probably be an actress also. Lendo said to me, one of the big problems that, that your students have, Nick, is that they get, they're so good so young that they don't know how to lose. And when they do get beat or they do lose a match, they don't know how to accept it. So I'm very high on, on honor uh, losing some matches as she did at the Orange Bowl because she not only uh, lost, but she lost because she didn't come to the net and developed her total game. I look for the openness of a student, how, how they walk and how they perceive themselves. And then you look at the feet and you look at the hands and eyes and see how they react to certain situations when they know they're being looked at. Now this is the best backhand, Rick. This is the best backhand I've ever seen for, for a youngster. Tommy Haas uh, came here um, um, with a lot of talent, uh, a lot of undeveloped talent. Uh, he was small when he came here. Now he shot up four or five inches. A lot of pressure on him from the German Federation and, and, and from the people in Germany who expect giant things from him. In the first summer he went home and only did fair, and the second only fair. And then all of a sudden he came back and worked very hard on his serve and very hard on a big forehand and boom goes down the Orange Bowl and wins the Orange Bowl of the world. Again, patience. He's only 14, going up 15, patience. Need another two years with Tommy Hunt. Atta boy, Tommy. Just a few more. OK. First set was very close. What was it? Stone yeah. 4, 5, low 30. You're kidding. Yeah. Put a little more sun on your, just oh. turn your shoulders. Open your shoulders up and look out, that's it, there you go. Nothing. I'm a, a very lucky guy. I uh, can't look back and have any regrets. Uh, it wouldn't help me to look back and have any regrets anyway. Looking back is uh, not the way that I have gone in my life. Once I've made a decision, whether it be positive or negative, I go forward. And I always have maintained that positive attitude, and I hope that God gives me the, the spirit and strength to continue going that way. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Oh,